Hey guys, it's Ross and in today's video I want to talk about soil, I want to talk about fertilizers, I want to talk about amendments, all that stuff that you should be using in your container fruit trees. I want to talk about how to apply all that stuff, when to apply it, and what it is. I'm going to show you guys every product that I use and talk about why. Uh, in terms of when, everything is awake now, right? It's the spring. This is the time to get this stuff on. Uh, we can go into finer details, I guess, with each individual fruit tree, but for the most part, getting on all this stuff, or the majority of all this stuff, now, as soon as the trees or the plants are awake, that's going to add up over the length of the season. That's going to be compounding interest over time, and you're going to have a healthier, stronger plant late in the season when it matters the most. So for me, these are the products that I'm using, and you can supplement you can have different alternatives to all these different products. I'm not saying these are the best. Certainly some of these are not the best. This really depends on year to year for myself. Um, you know, what can I afford? What have I researched and really started to like using? Uh, what is out there that actually has some research, some scientific literature behind it? And that actually makes a whole lot of sense. Um, you know, I, there's a whole bunch of crazy things you guys could get into if you grow wheat or you know someone who grows weed. There's all kinds of crazy people out there that use just a stupid amount of products that you don't even know if they really work. So, uh, you know, it's kind of, you can kind of get down a crazy rabbit hole and you may end up using so many products that you're pretty much taking better care of your plants than you do yourself, which is probably not something you want to do. <laughs> Alright, uh, the first thing I think we should mention is fertilizer. The fertilizer is pretty standard stuff. You can use either like an Osmocote type thing. This is Florican, which are these really um, slow release like beads, pebbles. I'm not exactly sure what to describe these. And these will break down over the length of months very slowly and these will feed your pot of trees. even feed things in the ground if you want it. Uh, personally, I do not add any inorganic fertilizer to the native soil. I only use inorganic fertilizer in my pots because organic fertilizer is not cheap and I have a lot of pots. And this is only a f maybe a third, um, like a fifth of the amount of pots I have. So, um, you know, this stuff can really add up in cost, the organic fertilizer. So. If you're gonna be feeding a lot of plants, I would definitely recommend getting something that is inorganic, just so you don't break the bank. You know, inevitably, if you're growing things in the soil, that that inorganic fertilizer, when it breaks down, it releases a chemical reaction that then turns into salt. So essentially, if you use enough inorganic fertilizer, in your native soil, you're going to degrade the quality of that soil over time because you're going to be adding salt year after year and plants don't like salt, guys. <laughs> you know, humans don't like salt either. We're basically all snails at the end of the day. But anyway, um, yeah, this is what I would use and I'm not actually going to be using this this year. I'm not going to be using any slow release. This is pretty much what the standard is that people use for figs. What they'll tell you is get yourself Osmocote. This is 18,512. Uh, what those number mean? Those numbers correspond to the NPK ratio here. Definitely something you need to pay attention to, but also pay attention to every single else on here. Read the guaranteed analysis. This also has other nutrients in it that are micronutrients. The numbers up here, these are the macronutrients, the NPK. The micronutrients are almost just as important as the macronutrients. So you got to cover your bases. And most of the time when you get yourself an, a synthetic fertilizer like this, it's going to have a lot of other micronutrients attached to it. Another one that I like to use, I mean, this is kind of just basically miracle Grow by a different name, but this is Jack's Professional Fertilizer. This is the water soluble stuff. This isn't the slow release. You put this in a can of water, it's going to dissolve and you can feed your plants that way. This one here is a 94515. This is really high in the potassium because the potassium really helps with blooming, helps with fruiting, helps with root development. And this is something late in the season that I prefer to use that's a bit lower in the nitrogen. 
Um, but I'm actually gonna be using this from day one of the season till about sometime in August. Sometime around August, I'm gonna stop feeding with this stuff completely. And if you wanna know the amounts, it tells you right here. So don't be asking me how much should I use. The same thing with this, with the, the slow release, it tells you how much to use. You just have to read. Um, now, for jacks though, and you can really, for the slow, the water soluble stuff, you can really be your own person with this. You don't have to follow this either. Is that you can kind of push the limits with your potted trees. Is that feed them every two weeks, feed them every week. Depends on how much you're using. Depends on what the plants look like. If the plants are really growing, then you know you're doing a good job with the fertilizer if you're gonna be using too much fertilizer over the course of a season you may actually start to see that you're getting some salt burn and all that fertilizer like i had mentioned that's inorganic that stuff breaking down you're going to get that salt burn it's going to burn the roots and you're going to see some of your plants really degrade even die um overnight so if that's happening to you or that does happen, then that's a good sign, okay, I need to stop fertilizing. You may, if you actually use too much fertilizer, too much inorganic fertilizer, you're gonna have to come in here and water your pots for a very long time to leach out all those salts, really dissolve all that out of there. And for me, I'd rather use less fertilizer than more, so um, certainly I'm only gonna be doing this until August, maybe even before that. Um, historically, even though this florican stuff I think lasts for about five months or so, which is about the length of the season, um, I have really not used all that much fertilizer in my pots. Um, for the most part, my trees are really compact, really slower growing compared to other people. And not only that, but I don't have to root prune nearly as much as everybody else because of it. If you really feed your trees, these things are gonna go nuts and they're gonna put out lots of roots that circle around and around and you're gonna have to root prune almost every year. So, you know, it's really up to you. How much fertilizer do you wanna use? But again, it's pretty simple. You just gotta pay attention to what's on the, on the bag, you know? This has some really nice micronutrients that are pretty hard to find in other types of fertilizers so i would recommend if you don't have something like this or maybe you even do i would recommend some kind of amendment that's going to cover all those bases as well and help get all those micronutrients one of them here is ironite this has a pretty wide variety of micronutrients it actually looking on the back before i started filming it doesn't appear to have that many anymore i don't know if they changed the formula or what but i may have to return this look it up on the internet and see how much micronutrients are in here because that's really why i'm using this this is mainly for your lawn it has a lot of iron in it but for me um you know iron doesn't really do it too much for my potted fruit trees it's really all about the micronutrients so if you don't have this or this isn't really going to work for us um, I would recommend green sand. I'd also recommend um, rock dust. All that stuff covers the base micronutrients that are really, really important. It's just like humans. If we don't have one little nutrient, our body doesn't work nearly as well. It's the same thing with the plants. So certainly cover that. One micronutrient that I really recommend is calcium and magnesium. These are two that are a bit more important, I think, than others. And it's really a great idea to add this to your soil every year. Um, I have lime right here and there's many types of lime. For the most part, the lime that's really cheap at the store is gonna be something that really uh, makes the soil very basic very quickly. So you don't wanna add too much of this because it's gonna change that soil pH, probably in a direction you don't wanna go in. So don't use too much, but certainly is really good for the amount of calcium and magnesium it has. Another alternative to this, which we probably will get, um, I'm not entirely sure if I want to spend the extra money this year, but it's something I've used all across my garden beds, all throughout the ground, everywhere, is gypsum. And gypsum also has, I believe, both of these nutrients in it. Or maybe it has calcium and sulfur, one of the two, I can't remember. Another good one is um, 
Epsom salts. So it's got these two nutrients in it, so, you know, but it does have definitely have sulfur in it. It's probably like sulfur and magnesium or sulfur and calcium, whichever. But the point is, those are the more important micronutrients, um, but calcium and magnesium, I think, are the two best that I look forward to. Um, now, before I get into the other products, I want to mention horticultural oil. This is really important also this time of the year is that we should spray all the fruit trees really before they wake up with this horticultural oil. It's going to kill any overwintering pests, any overwintering diseases. It's just a really good idea especially if you got scale or aphids all that stuff really helps uh it really suppresses the growth in your trees so if you got a lot of it if you have a big scale problem a big aphid problem you know that's a really good idea to be using that stuff and we will certainly be doing that on every single fig tree that i have another thing that we're going to be doing now that it's the beginning of the season is taking off all this mulch because this is gonna really help cool that soil, but we want the soil to be warm. So we're gonna take off all that mulch sometime around, um, you know, maybe June, July, we're gonna add the mulch back on, help regulate the water in the, in the soil, but also to cool things down a bit when it's really hot at that time of the year. So those are a couple things that I'm gonna be doing early in the season. But once we take off all that mulch, all this stuff is gonna go on. Now, another amendment that I'm gonna be using this year for the first time, this is mycorrhizae. This stuff's soluble, you put this in some water, it dissolves just like your water-soluble fertilizer down here. And uh, this will inoculate all of your potted plants, your garden beds, your fruit trees in the ground, all of this with mycorrhizae. And this is really, really important. There's a lot of studies about mycorrhizae. It's very apparent to me. There's a lot of benefits, even to your potted fruit trees. You would not believe, and I've seen it actually, because you can visually see mycorrhizae. I have actually seen it in some of my potted trees, but definitely not all of them have it. And definitely there's not all that benefit going on unless you inoculate it at least once. The good news is you only have to do it once for a perennial because if you inoculate it, they form that symbiotic relationship between the mycorrhizae and the roots. And as long as there is roots still there, that relationship will continue. So this is one product that actually I highly recommend because I was looking around for mycorrhizae from a reliable source that wasn't gonna break the bank. This is Myco Grow from Paul Stamets' uh, company. The man is an absolute genius when it comes to mushrooms and everything related to mushrooms. You know, mycorrhizae is pretty similar in terms of uh, kind of how it grows in the ground alongside mushrooms. But, um, well, maybe that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But basically, <laughs> the point is, is that his company here, Fungi Perfecti, really has some nice products. I even uh, take some mushroom supplements um, from his website, and they really work. Um, but anyway back to plants um, this is one product here that I'm going to be using in the fall later in the season this is a silica supplement Dynagro Protect and a lot of people recommend this for a couple reasons one silica does a whole lot of things and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of actual studies about silica in the soils and how it's actually mostly absent from our soils from our top soils um, it's all over the earth, by the way, but it's mostly absent in your yard. So I'm trying to get as much of this in the soil as I can because it helps with cold hardiness. It helps with um, lignifying growth, and it also helps with disease prevention. So I am certainly going to be spraying this late in the season on the figs as a foliar spray. I believe you could also if I read the back here, always read the label, but I think you can, yeah, you can put this in a siphon and uh, a fertilizer injector, which is where all this stuff for the most part is gonna go. All this water soluble stuff is gonna go in a fertilizer injector and it's gonna inject all this fertilizer in there for me. But I will have to apply the lime, the ironite, 
as well as what's down here. This is diatomaceous earth. And this stuff here is food grade. I think it's also organic. Um, yeah, it's, it's organic down there. This is a pretty easy, affordable source of it that I was able to find online because I can't really find it anywhere else locally for a pretty reasonable price. I think this is about $20 a bag and it's about 40 or 50 pounds. Diatomaceous Earth does a similar thing to the Dynagrow Protect in that it's a silica supplement. Um, it says right here on the back, Protect contains potassium and 7.8 silicon dioxide to reduce stress caused by heat, cold, and drought. So, you know, certainly I have a big feeling that a, a large part of why I didn't get any rust this year on my fig trees was because of the diatomaceous earth that I had applied last year. Um, also, I'm really struggling with getting a lot of my trees to lignify in time. Some of them just grow way too much. So if I can get a lot of these guys to lignify up, hopefully with the Dynagrow Protect, that will certainly um, be well worth the money that I'm spending on that product. Uh, but overall, this is the only new products and the Mycorrhizae. Those are the only new ones that I'm using this year. Everything else is pretty simple. I mean, there's not much else to this. I do want to mention one last thing, which is the soil. And this is the soil I've been using for years. I really wish this company, Just Natural, would reach out to me because I'm pretty sure I've sold more bags of this stuff than their top sales guy. <laughs> it is a really nice soil. It's organic. Um, they also have different types that I really should experiment with, but I love this one because it's a soil conditioner, which is really great drainage. It has really amazing drain drainage and it also has the right amount of holding capacity. It's really good for growing just about any plant. Um, it's 50% pine bark and 50% compost. And it's a pretty good compost, I have to say. It's made out of woody um, plant materials, so it's not really made out of any manures, it's just broken down over time um, from plant material. So that is, I guess, the video, guys. Um, hopefully you guys found this one helpful. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me. We've done videos like this, though, in the past. So what I would suggest is if you, if you are interested in hearing more details about this, probably one of the best videos I ever did was on this subject. So go back and watch that one. I think it's like fertilizers and soil or something for growing fruit trees and containers. And um, I'm also gonna have this one linked, the video or the, the video I just mentioned is gonna be linked on our social media. So if you follow me there, just look for the video there. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also have a new blog post, a new blog really, on the website. Um, rossratty.wixsite.com slash blog. If there is ever a new amendment that I'm going to try, that's kind of the place where I'm going to talk about it. So follow me there on the blog. You can subscribe down at the bottom. Also like this video and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, we also have pretty much about 26 or 27 